good morning good morning how you guys doing is it even morning what time what time is it when you listen to this can you just just comment in there i want to know i'm very curious what time do you guys listen to this stuff i like saying good morning because that's the time that i re recorded or good afternoon or whatever it is maybe i should start saying good day because i mean some of you is like 1 a.m or 6 in the morning the following day whatever day it is um i can't even say happy wednesday because maybe it's not even wednesday when you listen to this um yeah or, or what good happy right now <laughs> yeah happy right now yeah i can't say happy wednesday or whatever i've got something i'm gonna share with you um that um shook me a little bit it's about promotion some of you might already know this uh, but for those of you who were like me didn't let's let's share a little bit i've been thinking a lot about promotion in the last few days and i was looking for biblical examples to try and understand how that works out and i landed on an example between father and son um, and that is jacob and joseph both of them experienced promotion but it was a different kind of promotion right um and and i feel like that kind of gives us a pattern of how god promotes us are these the only types of promotion no i don't think so but i do want to talk about the two that i've been meditating upon um sorry i'm getting distracted there's a guy who's doing um sprints up there it's <laughs> it's a struggle so he walks down and then he sprints up good <laughs> uh but kudos to him for for exercising right okay sorry I, I won't get distracted anymore um yeah and 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 there's this talk about you know you know own your thing do your thing start your own business start your own ministry start your own something right and i think you know um we tend to to think I've made it when I have my own thing. But that might not be the path that God has for you. Um, and, and I want to use biblical examples so you don't you know think I suck it out of my thumb. If you look at Jacob, um, Jacob ran away from his family and went to live with his uncle Laban or Laban. Um, and he... He, he then had to look after his um, um, uncle's flock, right? Only after that did he end up with his own, right? Um, numerous, numerous thousands. Like, like God really, really blessed him. Um, and so sometimes that's the kind of path that we think everybody is on, that you would, you would um, look after somebody else's thing, work in someone's company, uh, help somebody out with their business, help somebody out with their ministry, and then eventually you would have your own company, business, uh, ministry, or, 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 or family, right? Even family, right? Um, you'd end up having your own family after you've looked after somebody else's. But promotion doesn't always look like that. And, and, and today I want to touch on two things. One, there's different kinds of promotion. Two, are you positioned for the kind of promotion that, that you are trusting God for, that you're even praying about? I think that there's nothing wrong with asking with asking for promotion, wanting promotion, praying for promotion. But we have to position ourselves for, for, for promotion, number one. Number two, we have to trust God to give us the kind of promotion that he has in store for us. We can't be prescriptive uh, about how God uh, promotes us, how God blesses us. We can't be prescriptive about that, right? Because he's the one with the script. And so with with Jacob, we find that he has um, um, looked after his uncle's flock and it's time for him to have his own. Right. Uh, and I think part of that was a fulfillment of 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 God's promises over his life. Then we have his son, Joseph, uh, who, even though he experienced promotion, never really had his own. Right. Because if you look at it. Um, Joseph went all the way from, you know, being a messenger to, and, and I want to talk about, as I talk about this, I also want to talk about whether you're positioning yourself for a promotion, right? Um, the Bible says that, um, he who is faithful in little will be allowed to have ruler over much, right? Um, you'll be entrusted with a lot more. 
um the bible also says that you know how you're going to be given your own stuff if you're not you're not being faithful with somebody else's and i believe that applies to to the jacob example because he looked after his uncle's flock until he could have his own but we tend to think that's the all that's the only direction that's the only trajectory there is also a responsibility that says if you are faithful with little then you'll be allowed to have rule over much much does not always mean it's yours <laughs> It just, it just means that there's an increase of responsibility. Uh, let me give you an example with Joseph. Joseph had to be faithful with just being a messenger, with his dad saying, hey, go give a message to your brothers, right? Um, who were out looking after the flock. Remember, Jacob is, is, very, is very wealthy. He's got a lot of flock. He had to be faithful in that level, right? Then he had to be, then, then, then his brothers had issues with him. They sold him as a slave. I don't want to go too much into that because it's quite painful. Um, he, he gets sold as a slave. And the kind of person that Joseph is and the trajectory and the life that God has in store for him doesn't allow for him to be a slave of a nobody. He ends up being a slave of Potiphar. Now, um, um, Potiphar was quite high in status. And and so and so Joseph now is 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 in a is in a space where he has to be responsible with somebody else's um, household. Joseph did so well that Potiphar made him, you know, responsible for everything. Right? He could do anything, have anything, except for Potiphar's wife. So not only did Joseph had to be responsible with somebody else's household. Um, he also had to position himself by protecting his own integrity because Potiphar's wife wanted him and he had to say no. And so the question is, can you be faithful when you're just a messenger, which is what Joseph was when his dad told him to go give a message to his brothers? Can you be faithful when somebody has given you access to everything except for this one thing? Sound familiar, hey? You can eat from every tree in this garden except for one tree. Anyway, Joseph, you know, found himself in a compromising situation where he actually had to run um, from, from Potiphar, Potiphar's wife. And um, she accused him and he ended up in prison. So now Joseph is in prison. And in there, um, he had to be faithful with people's destinies. Can you imagine? God gave him a dream when he was young. As far as we know, he's not having any other dream. As far as we know, it looks like he's moving further and further away from, from the dream that God gave him. But even in the prison, he had to be responsible. He had to be faithful with the gift that he had. He had to be faithful with the faith that he had. And when I say, can you be responsible with people's destinies? It's because David could, I mean, David, Joseph could interpret people's dreams. And we had the cup bearer and then we had the baker. And the baker's um, um, destiny wasn't so, wasn't so good. It didn't work out so well for him. The cup bearer, however, it worked out well for him because he went back to, to the palace, which is where he was, right? And even in there, Joseph had to be faithful. And my question to you is, you're praying for promotion. You're working hard for promotion. But are you being faithful? And also, are you giving God the space to promote you in the way that he chooses? Because Joseph eventually got promoted. And not only was he second in command of part of his house, or even responsible for the jailers when he was in prison. Now he's second in command to the highest man in the land. Um, to uh, not Potiphar, what's the other one? Pharaoh, to Pharaoh, right? Now he's second in command to Pharaoh. Um, and he had to, it, it, now he, he's been promoted, right? As far as I know, um, Joseph wasn't necessarily given his own, right? Yes, he's very high in command. Yes, he got married and he had his two sons, but he was always responsible for somebody else's thing. And a lot of us think that promotion will come when I have, my own xyz maybe you'll never own your own house and that's difficult to hear but maybe you have to stay in the presidential palace because you have to be there 24 7 that still counts as promotion maybe you'll never have your own business 
Um, but but maybe you don't have to be a clock anymore. Maybe you're going to be the VP. Maybe you're going to be the president. Who knows of that company or of that business? That still counts as promotion. And my question is, are you positioned for promotion? And there's different ways to be positioned. Um, there is being faithful in what you're doing. And that is positioning yourself for promotion. But are you positioned internally and mentally by being open to the kind of promotion that God wants to give you? And a lot of us are hurting ourselves. God knows how he created us. Some of us, owning your own thing will kill you. But you want it. But it's not for you. It's not for you. It's, it was not for Joseph. As much as it was for Jacob, it was not for Joseph. But was he not promoted? He was. He, he was promoted from being just a messenger. Almost got killed in the pit, I agree. Was a slave to Potiphar, but he was promoted to being, you know, responsible for literally Potiphar's entire household. Um, going into prison didn't look like a promotion, but it was a rite of passage. He had to go through that, right? So that he could interact with the cupbearer and the baker. Um, and also it was Pharaoh's prison. So he also had to learn the decorum. How do you deal with, how do you speak to people who are working with Pharaoh? right that was also part of his preparation even though it didn't look like it and so we think that promotion looks like this it's it's uphill right you're always going up no but sometimes promotion looks like this because if god is going to promote you he has to prepare you and sometimes preparation doesn't look like it doesn't look like and it might be but it doesn't look like from glory to glory sometimes promotion looks like being dad's favorite to being thrown in the pit by your brothers right? And promotion looks like, you know, being Potiphar's second in command to being thrown in the prison, right? Um, and then it looks like um, living in the prison and looking like, you know, when you're thrown in prison and you don't even know what your sentence is, you, you don't even know when you're going to get out. But still, God's hand was still upon Joseph. And God fulfilled the promise that he gave to Joseph when he was young. And he says, oh, he saw the sun and the moon bowing before him and, and, and then the stars, which were his brothers. That eventually happened when he lived the life that God had for him. So I want to encourage you today to leave it up to God to give you the kind of promotion that he wants. Our responsibility is to position ourselves for promotion. Position ourselves by believing that God will promote us. Um, and position ourselves by, by, by being faithful with the little that we have. You know, promotion is part of God's blessings. One of the most pivotal messages that I've ever had from Bishop Chalo from Gospel Rama Church. An amazing, an amazing man. Amazing preacher, prolific in the word of God. And he broke down what salvation is and he said that you know um salvation is i always forget the fifth one so please forgive me it's the five p's of salvation it's preservation it's promotion it's protection it is uh, preserve let's start let's start with promotion provision preservation promotion and i always forget the fifth one and I'll comment on it somewhere. I'll look for my notes, right? So promotion is part of salvation. It's part of God's blessings. It's part of the way in which God saves us, right? Sometimes from ourselves. Um, and so you've got provision, you've got protection, um, you've got promotion, you've got preservation. And so you can see promotion is one of those ways that God uplifts us. It's one of those ways that God moves us forward. I don't want to go into the five P's because they're always so, so amazing to talk about. But I just want to encourage you today to say that God wants to promote you. Leave it up to him to determine the kind of promotion that he wants to give you. Your responsibility is to trust him. Your responsibility is to be faithful with what you've been given. Your responsibility is to position yourself, not only physically, but also internally, in your own heart, in your own mind. Let go of what kind of promotion you think you want. Unless God has given you a promise. If he has, that's fantastic. But if he hasn't given you a specific and a particular promise to say, I want to promote you this way, then leave it up to him. Why won't we trust him? Why can't we trust him? Why won't we trust the one who fashioned us? The one who knit us in our mother's womb to determine the kind of promotion that won't break us, that won't kill us, that won't pull us away from him. So I just want to encourage you today, position yourself for promotion and trust God. 
um, at whatever time you're listening to this ad. Have a blessed day. And trust God, man. He is so worth trusting. He knows what he's doing. God bless.